backing out of a real estate sale could cost you million dollars, like it did for one couple when they walked away from their contract to purchase this property in Delta, BC. So I'm going to go a little bit off script here today and talk to you about this article that I saw because, well, yeah, for the first time in my career, we have seen people walk away from transactions. Not our buyers in particular, because they are always set up and ready to purchase, but it has happened to some sellers out there where the buyer does not complete on the purchase. And most buyers think that, well, that's okay to just walk away from. And I'm even going to discuss if the cooling off period would help in this particular situation and would have avoided this entire lawsuit. But of course, if you would like to stay up to date on Surrey and Fraser Valley Real Estate, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We would absolutely love to have you join this community. And if you learn anything here today, please go ahead and click the like button to help me get this information out to more people. Now, let's pop into the article. It is titled, Backing Out of Real Estate Sale Costs This BC Couple $1 Million. Now, there is a picture of the home it is down in uh, Tawasson, which is in Delta, uh, not that far from my office. A different board area, mind you. It is in the Vancouver board area. And this particular piece of property is very expensive. This street is kind of out near the ferry terminal, and it's up on the bluff. And uh, many of these properties have views, really, really expensive real estate. Now, let's jump into it here. And I, this is a little bit biased in the way that they are explaining this, but let's get into it. A wealthy Vancouver couple has found themselves on the hook for almost $1 million after they reneged on a multi-million dollar real estate deal, and the property owner sued. Now, this is extremely important because we have seen sales fall apart, but I'm going to talk about that more uh, just coming up here after I explain what's going on. Now, it does name the people because this is public record and it has gone through court and they have lost, just spoiler alert, but they blame a bunch of reasons why they backed out of this $4.5 million sale. Now, you can whine and say, yeah, no house is worth $4.5 million. That is not this conversation, but this was also back in 2016. Here's something I want to cover. If you're going to take someone to court, that was 2016. Sure, we had some, some lockdowns and some courts shutdowns. But honestly, it took these people about six years to see the loss. Now, they actually did go ahead and, and win the lawsuit. But to get some sort of an answer to their lawsuit took six years. So this is why so many owners don't go ahead with lawsuits. But they offered $4.5 million on this house in Tawasson. Now, this is the interesting part, and this is where I think the cooling off period gets it wrong. So they're happy with the house. They bought the house. They're good with the house. Now, it does. what is not clear in this to me is whether or not this was right around foreign buyer tax time, because if you remember when foreign buyer tax came out, it was retroactive and the market fell immediately. Uh, 2016, halfway through 2016 into 2017 was a very bad time for detached market in the Vancouver board area. So it may have had something to do with that. However, when they told their friends, their friends told them the house was not worth that much. So now this is very important. They decided not to pay the $300,000 deposit and back out of the deal. I have had this happen in the past, and this is where the cooling off period is going to come in. So what happens is they obviously either offered on the house, maybe they had conditions, maybe they didn't, maybe we'll find that out in the article. But either way, deposit was due after the deal had gone firm. So they had either removed conditions or submitted an unconditional offer. And then they failed to pay the deposit, thinking that if I don't pay the deposit, I can just walk away. Well, that is not the case. In the new system, they would have had a buyer rescission period that if they exercised the correct paperwork, they would have had to pay something like an eleven dollars or $12,000 penalty to walk away. However, in this case, they thought they could just walk away, not even pay the deposit, not even give the deposit to the seller, and just be home free. Well, let me tell you, that is not the case. Now, here's the next section. Now, when someone walks away from a, a sale, if you're going to prove damages, you, the seller, now have to resell that property. And, well, as we said, the market went really, really crappy uh, for a long time in 
that kind of time period. So I'm assuming this was right after foreign buyer tax came through. He sold the property. It took him another 18 months and he sold it for $3,480,000 or a drop of 970,000 bucks. Now, maybe you're saying, okay, yeah, well, this is a lot of money. They backed out. It wasn't worth it. Uh, good for these buyers. Let, let, <laughs> these are not unsavvy people, by the way, because they currently live in an $11 million house. So they were buying what sounded like a second property, maybe. So let's just think about this for a minute. This might be the same equivalent as, if we just knock off a zero, somebody buying a $1.1 million house and then looking at their second property uh, for maybe, oh, I don't know, 450000 bucks. Wouldn't be that much of a stretch, I don't think, if you have that type of money at your disposal. Then they argued that they did not think the contract was valid if they decided not to pay the deposit, which is untrue. Then after that didn't work, they tried to blame their realtor for the misunderstanding and separately launched a civil case against their real estate agent, which of course everybody's going to do if anything goes wrong. You've got to sue everybody. Then they gave a multitude of other reasons why they backed out. Uh, saying that the property was misrepresented and that part of the mowed lawn in the backyard was actually on First Nations land. Like these guys started throwing out every excuse in the book to try and get out of the deal. However, it looks like the judge didn't buy any of that at all. Um, they the blame. It sounds like there was a little bit of blame on the realtor. Maybe didn't give them absolutely everything uh, that they needed to know. However, here's the interesting part. A lot of people don't say if you're going to take somebody to court. Uh, or if you're going to back out of a deal, guess what they get to summon? Your WeChat messages. And there is no mention of any of their previous excuses in their WeChat mentions. And these new excuses of why they want to get out of the deal were all made up after the fact to try and get out of the deal specifically. Here's the part where the justice says the realtor didn't necessarily meet their standard of care in all circumstances, but did it not affect the obligation of the buyer to then still complete on the purchase? And ultimately, the justice said that, well, guess what? That guy that you were going to buy the property off of lost that property for $970,000 because that's what he would have made had you bought the property. So now you don't have the property and you have to pay him almost a million bucks. So let's break this down a little bit because the cooling off period, the way it comes in, this type of thing may happen often. And yes, they would only the seller would only be able to go after say eleven or twelve thousand dollars. However, getting that money from that person walking away because remember the deposit was not yet paid would likely take the same six year court battle in order to recover the fee, re, the rescission fee or whatever the NDP has decided to call it. However, the deals that are falling apart and not completing, like you've seen maybe on some CBC Marketplace uh, exposés that they've done, most of those had counted on property values going up and interest rates staying low, and they didn't do their due diligence in advance of removing conditions. And then let's say we have a 90-day close. They don't show signs of not closing until... I don't know, 75 days into the process. So if you think the rescission period is, I mean, it would have helped these people, but if you think it's going to help a lot of other people that have to back out of transactions after, uh, maybe as interest rates increase or they didn't do their due diligence in the first place coming out of a hot market, it's not going to fix those problems. It would have fixed this problem to a degree, but it will not fix those people that cannot complete. And that is the real issue that we have seen over the last six months. So remember, please, before you enter into any contracts at all, understand your obligations as a buyer. Because sometimes if you write the offer and it gets accepted, you can't just walk away. And it gets even trickier. If you have conditions in the offer and you just don't remove them, and you could have removed them, well, if this owner took you to court and followed through with it, which I don't think many of them will do, there's a very good chance that they could sue for something called specific performance, which means the judge could possibly force you to buy the property or at least pay the owner the money that they lost as a result of having to sell to somebody else in a down market.
And if all this is extremely confusing to you and you need help here in my market of Surrey and the Fraser Valley, go ahead and book a call with me right now so you don't get sued for a million bucks and end up without the property anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, click the like button, and we'll see you in a couple of days.